The following are responses from an experiment with treatment groups A, B, and C. It looks like we have four measurements for each group. Is there evidence any of the treatment means differ from one of another? And from this data, let's perform an ANOVA F test with a significance level of 0 0.10. So we're going to actually calculate the F statistic by hand using the information that we know that our F test statistic is equal to MSTR, so the mean squared for the treatment over the mean squared error. And the mean squared treatment has the formula J over I minus one times the summation of each individual treatment mean minus the grand mean x bar dot dot and squared. So that's going to be our mean squared for the treatment and the mean squared error is equal to the sum of all of the individual variances so from each treatment group so that's the sample variances so that's s i squared all over the number of treatments which is i and so we can actually calculate the f test statistic this way so that's what we're going to do all right so first of all what is going to be our null and alternative hypothesis for the f test well our f test is always going to test an equal equality of means so mu a is equal to mu b is equal to mu c and the alternative is that at least one mu is different or at least two two means are different from each other either way basically it's saying the same thing so at least one of your means is different from the others and that's what we're going to test with this ANOVA F test. So if we're looking at this, then the first thing that we should do is calculate the individual group means. So we can do that by calculating the mean of these values. So the mean of treatment A, we can simply get that by summing up 3.5, 3.4, 3.8, and 3.5 and dividing by four. We get that to be equal to 3.55 so that in notation is x bar a dot we can do the same thing for treatment b that's x bar b dot which will be equal to 3.825 and lastly for treatment c that's x bar c dot so what the dot represents is that basically you're averaging over j the number of observations and it's saying i'm averaging over j the number of age observations and this is this mean is just for treatment c so that's what this notation means so x bar c dot is equal to 3.475 and now from here i can either calculate my grand mean so x bar dot dot i can calculate that by taking the average of the means or i can simply just take the average of the entire set so that's just x bar dot dot is just what we call the grand mean it's just the overall mean of all the response values so this is equal to 3.62 all right, in addition to this, I want to also take the standard deviations or the variances of all these values. So once again, the variance is just the square of the standard deviation. So if I calculate the standard deviation on a, on a computer or something like that, then I need to square it so I get the variance. So if I were to calculate them by hand, then recall this is just each observation minus its mean. divided by the, num by the number um, of the observations minus one. So in this case, that'd be I minus one, or excuse me, J minus one. There we go. All right, so this is how we can calculate the variance. If we do that for each one of these, then I get that S squared A is equal to 0 0.03, S squared B is equal to 0 0.009, and S squared C is equal to 0 0.16. All right, so now that I've calculated my variances and my 
individual means, calculating the mean squared treatment and mean squared error is going to be pretty straightforward. Let's first calculate the MSE. So the mean squared error is going to be a little bit easier than the mean squared treatment, and this is equal to the sum of my variances all divided by the number of treatments. So this is S squared A plus S squared B plus S squared C all divided by I. So this comes out to be equal to 0 0.055 divided by 3, which is equal to 0 0.01833. So again, I've just taken the variances that I've calculated above here, 0 0.3, 0 0.009, 0 0.1, 0 0.016, and added those together, and I get 0 0.055, divide by the number of treatments, which is 3, and I get my mean squared error here. So that's going to be the denom denominator of my F-test statistic. Now if I want to find the mean squared treatment, this is a little bit more involved. I have to take each one of the individual means and subtract off the grand mean, square it, sum those all up, and multiply times J, over I minus one. So this is equal to um, J, in this case is the number of observations in each treatment group, so that's four. The number of treatments is three, so three minus one is equal to two. And then I'm going to multiply that times each one of these individual treatment means divide by the grand mean and square it. So 3.55 minus 3.62 squared plus 3.8 25 minus 3.62 squared plus one more 3.475 minus 3.62 squared and I get this whole quantity to be then equal to so square them add them all up I get that whole quantity to be equal to 0 0.0679 Multiply this by 2, because that's what 4 divided by 3 minus 1, 4 divided by 2 is equal to 2, and I get a mean squared treatment value of 0 0.13583. Okay, so now I have the two values that I need in order to calculate my F-test statistic. I have F, again this is the mean squared treatment, which is 0 0.13583 all divided by the mean square of the error, 0 0.01833, and I get an F-test statistic of 7.409. Now, I need to compare this to an F-distribution with 2 and 9 degrees of freedom. Now, how did I get these degrees of freedom? Well, the numerator degrees of freedom is equal to I minus one, which in this case, I of course is equal to three. That is the number of treatments. So in this case, that is three minus one, which is equal to two. And my denominator degrees of freedom is I times J minus one, which in this case is equal to three times j minus 1, which is the number of observations in each treatment group. So that's 4 minus 1, which is equal to 3 times 3, which is equal to 9. So that's how I get my degrees of freedom. And recall the F distribution looks something like this. And so I want to find the area that falls above 7.409 on a F distribution with 2 and 9 degrees of freedom. So I can do this by looking it up in on um, software, but I can also use a table, and that's what we're going to do now. So not all F tables are the same, but the idea is the same when looking at the degrees of freedom. So first you want to look up your numerator degrees of freedom. In this case, it's going to be the top row, so our numerator degrees of freedom is 2. And then we're going to scroll down to find our denominator degrees of freedom. So if we keep looking down, we'll find over here on the left-hand side, these are our denominator degrees of freedom. And we have denominator degrees of freedom of 9. Now we look over, and these are the four test statistics that correspond with the significance levels 0 0.10, 0 0.05, 0 0.01, and 0 0.00. And we find that our test statistic of 7.409 falls between 4.26 and 8.02. So we know that our p-value will then be between these two significance levels of 0 0.01 and 0 0.05. So our p-value is between 
0.05 and 0.01. We'll recall our significance level was 0.10, so we definitely have a smaller p-value than our significance level, which means that we can reject the null hypothesis. And what that means is that there is, there is moderately suggestive evidence at least one of the means differs from the others. So the ANOVA or the overall F-test, the ANOVA F-test, doesn't test whether or not um, one specific mean is different. It just tests if at least one of them is different. So we don't know which one is. We can, we can kind of maybe figure it out by looking at a box plot of the data and look at just the general averages, which ones um, are, are much different than the others. But in general, what we'll need to do is we'll need to then perform what's called a multiple comparisons procedure to see which specific means are different. That will be in a different lesson.